Nobody likes paying for ABSD. Same goes for developers. Do you know when developers buy land from the government, they are required to pay 40% ABSD on the land that they purchased? So if the land costs $100 million, the developers need to pay $140 million up front to the government. If they can sell off all the units, 35% is refundable, but on the condition that they sell everything within 5 years. So most of the developers would rather sell off the other remaining units at a discount than incur the penalty. I'm not saying that all these units are a good buy. It's like when you go to IKEA and you're shopping at the Aziz section, you get a heavy discount on all the leftover items. There is a reason why these condos aren't selling as well as the others. If there is a sale, it usually means that there are some attributes that are less desirable. So the question of the day is, are they worth buying if developers are giving huge discounts considering the fact that they haven't been selling well? So here are three projects reaching the ABSD deadline with still quite a lot of unsold units. So number one, the very famous Cascadian Reserve. Cascadian Reserve is a 99-year leasehold condominium with a total of 192 units. So currently, they relaunched 20% lower than their initial launch price. Initially, it was 3,600 PSF and now they have lowered it to 2,900 PSF. There are probably some reasons why this project wasn't doing so well. Um, first of all, this project is actually a leasehold project surrounded by freehold condos. So there is a slight disadvantage when it's being compared to the surrounding condos because the initial launch price is at the same or even higher than the surrounding freehold projects. So buyers would tend to choose freehold instead of the leasehold instead. So number two, which is the land bid. The land bid for Cascadian Reserve is also much higher compared to the surrounding competitors. So there were eight competitors, but the developers actually bid it and they made the record price for the government land sale in Singapore. They overbid for this area and then I guess because of this, the developers would definitely need to pass on the cost to the buyers. So it's difficult for them to profit when their initial land bid is so high. So furthermore, there's also an upcoming competitor that is coming up and they bought Orchard Boulevard Parcel. So this parcel is going to be launched in 2025 and it will be a mixed development, about 270 residential units with about 500 commercial space. So although it's also 99 years, the developers only paid for the land at 1,616 PSF compared to Cascadian Reserve at 2,377. So the difference is really a lot. And also Orchard Boulevard is much closer to the MRT compared to it. Although with the 20% relaunch price, definitely this is a slash sale. But the fundamentals for Cascadian Reserve seems to be quite shaky. And when the Orchard Boulevard is going to be launched next year, I also wonder if the developers may then decide to reduce and have a further reduction in their price. So number two is the landmark. The landmark is a 99-year project located along Chin Sui Road with 396 units. And the landmark is next to Pearl Hill City Park and close to Orchard Park MRT. Currently, this landmark has about 28 units remaining. And if you look at the unit type, the landmark mostly have one to two bidders. So you can see that the developers are actually uh, gunning more towards the investors for this project. The landmark was officially launched for sale in November 2020 with an average PSF of about 2,250. So the developers have also been slowly staging up the price ever since. But currently, developers are offering discounts on the remaining units. For example, the unit for the three bidders, there's a discount of about 270k, which is currently at 2,770 PSF. I won't say there's a lot of a very slash discount compared to Cascadian Reserve, but at least there are some opportunities for people who are looking to enter. So number three is One Burnham. It's located at Burnham Street at Tanjong Paga District 2. So it's only about a five minutes stroll from Tanjong Paga MRT and the future Prince Edward MRT station. So One Burnham is actually a mixed-use development and there's actually commercial spaces on the first four floors and residential units starting from the fifth floor all the way to the 35th floor. So currently, there's about 127 units out of 351. So the sales for this one burnham started in about May 2021. And looking at the unit mix, also 90.9% .9 is actually for investment and only 9.1% own stay. So it's the same as the landmark. It's really more for those investors who are looking for this place. Currently, there's also star buys for this project with discounts given by the developers as well. So the three bidders are starting from 3.6 million onwards with some savings about 176k. As of the fourth quarter of 2023, the unsold inventory remained relatively low at 17,000 units. Although this has risen by about 6.9% from the fourth quarter, 
well, the level of unsold stock is still much lower compared to the 35,000 units that was unsold in 2019. I do think that the inventory stocks will clear up in time to come with the developers offering such discounts. So actually, if you also notice that if most of the unsold inventory stocks do belong to the CCR region, uh, mainly due to the lesser demand from foreigners with the increase of ABSD being 60%, and HDB upgraders really not looking to live in this uh, area because most of the projects are only for one or two bidders. Furthermore, the government has also given some leeway for the developers. So been reducing the pressure and letting the developers have a tiering system based on how much uh, units that they have sold. So actually the purpose of this ABSD is meant to prevent developers from hoarding land and like playing Monopoly in the future. So should you go for all these discounted units? Well, I think if you're buying really for your own stay then and you're not looking to sell in the future, then about 2009 PSF for a new condo in Orchard Central is actually quite tempting. For example, the gap between the OCR and the CCR region is actually quite narrow. And um, in this case, developers may give in more discounts or star buys, throw in renovation and also give you like flexible uh, timeline, like you can buy and you can stay first and then pay later. But it's also good to do your own due diligence and uh, identify what is the attributes of the remaining units left. For example, if the floor is too low, is there west sun or is the how's the price relative to the surrounding project? Because if it's too good to be true, it usually is. Uh. For example, the comparing Cascadian Reserve and Landmark, Cascadian really has its price slashed because the fundamentals are weaker than the Landmark. So let me know what you think. Uh, you can reach out to me if you wish to get actually the exact information on which projects and how much are the discounts going for and I can share with you the pros and cons for each of each project. Alright, I'll see you in the next video. Bye!